Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. We are in my new, to me, garage. Uh, we bought another house. We are moving here soon. Uh, and the garage is one of the things that we have to attack because, let's be honest, I can't, I can't handle this situation. So, uh, in this video, it's probably gonna be a series of, I don't know, three or four videos probably, of going through and updating this garage. And perfect timing, because my friend Jason just pulled up, and he's gonna take all of these old cabinets away with him. So let's get started. Okay, now that we've got the old stuff demoed and out of the garage and cleaned up, I always take the time to really do my due diligence and do a lot of pre-planning in this stage. I plan on reusing the cabinets from the old garage and moving them into the new garage. So I know how many cabinets I have. I can go ahead and measure and see how all of that is going to fit in this garage. Is it all going to fit? Can I fit more in there? Uh, what's it gonna feel like in that space? Is it gonna, gonna start to get cramped? What's the workflow gonna be like, etc. So to do this, I always use SketchUp. Now SketchUp is a free software online, it's an app. Uh, they do have paid versions, but you can use it completely for free, like I have, and I've done this for many projects in the past. I did it when we built our office, as you can see here, and it turned out absolutely perfect. I was really happy with it. I also did it for my old garage when I built it out the last time, and of course now I'm doing it here. Now this isn't gonna be a tutorial on how to use SketchUp by any means, but obviously you wanna start with your most precise measurements you can, and then just start building it out from there. And once you're done, you're able to put yourself inside of this room to see how it's going to flow, what the workspace is gonna look like. Is it gonna be cramped? Can you fit more stuff in there? Do you need to take things out? Uh, how creative can you get? You can often find sort of nooks and crannies and hidden spaces that you didn't realize would be there when you kind of model it out in 3D like this. Now, if I did everything correctly, it should look just like this. When we're done, let's jump back into the garage and see how I did. All right, so as I unloaded the old cabinets from the trailer, I went ahead and placed them against the wall according to the map that I've sort of laid out already. And um, while it's really close and it looks like we could just hang the upper cabinets, there's some things I wanna see if I can refine. We've gotta take some trim off the wall. I might even cut some trim down around the window. So one problem we're gonna run into is this bit of trim here because it sticks out from the wall and it won't allow this cabinet to go all the way against the wall. So when I put the upper cabinets up here, it's not gonna bolt into that uh, flush. So I wanna remove that trim. I also have the slat wall that's gonna end up going from the bottom of this and it's gonna cover that joint between the drywall in this paneling. Initially, I was gonna just remove that paneling altogether, but now I realize it's gonna get covered up and you won't ever see it. Issue number two is this window. When I measured this, I think I measured the inside of the window, which is exactly the width that we need, is about 56 inches. So that means when I put these upper two cabinets up here, they're gonna come past this lower cabinet. This, this isn't gonna be here, I'm gonna move this and I wanna slide this down and it'll end up being on this side of this breaker box so I can still access that. So the decision I need to make is do I wanna pull this window trim down and cut it down? The problem is it needs to only be about an inch wide and I don't know if that's enough to cover up this gap, this like reveal between the window and the sheetrock and if that's gonna end up looking worse or what. But again, that slat wall is gonna die into that trim. I'm gonna start with removing this lower trim panel here so that I can get that cabinet against the wall and then I'll figure out what I wanna do with this window soon. I'm setting up this laser because I can see in between the gap of the paneling and the drywall, I can see where the studs are. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and go ahead and mark out where they are now to eliminate any of that guesswork later because we've got to screw in this slat wall every so many inches and then we have to also put the hangers up there for the upper cabinets, etc. So the studs are gonna be very important and I wanna know where they are. So this is gonna make life much easier.
All right, excellent. That is gonna work well. I've got the cabinets lined up dead center with that. They're gonna die right at the end of the framing for the window. So that means when I put a slat wall up, I can have it right here and then I'll just come back and trim around that so it has a nice clean finished edge. And then I'll cap off the top. I do have to cut one more piece here in the middle so that that bamboo countertop will sit all the way back against the window and not push it off of the window anymore. And then I've got to deal with this. It worked out perfectly. Exactly as I hope. So I'll be able to cap this off with a small piece of trim that'll go all the way up along the edge of those upper cabinets and then tie that in. And then you can see I was able to get this guy all the way back against the wall um, and that's dying off into there. I need to level that big cabinet out still. The rest of these have all been leveled. I made sure that was level. So the next thing to do is get these upper cabinets hung and this is gonna require some other sort of critical math to ensure that when I hang them, they're not sitting on top of this directly and that they're, the weight is on the brackets. Now they use these hanging brackets. It's like a French cleat. I don't know if you can see it, but a little bit of an offset there. And once you bolt it up to the wall, it's gonna sit on these brackets like that. And then you can bolt these through to the studs as well. Now, last time what I did was mark the height that I wanted the top of the cabinet. But then when I sat it down on this, it was a little bit different. I don't know if it's, there's probably a 16th of an inch difference. So I think what I'm gonna do is stick this in the back of the cabinet. So what I did was measure the bottom of the cabinet to the bottom of this bracket. Once it's all the way up in there, I got about right at 18 and a quarter. So I'm going to make a line at 18 and a quarter up there. And I know the bottom of the bracket can sit at that 18 and a quarter. And when I hang those, it should be money. I've got a cabinet that I couldn't get apart, so they bolt through to the sides, and one of the nuts and bolts, the threads were stripped out, so they wouldn't separate. So I've got a set of cabinets that's already bolted together as two, so I'm gonna get Brandy to go ahead and help me just put those up as a set and hope for the best. Okay, so I moved this cabinet out of the way. It's gonna end up going over here next to the compressor. I moved this skinny cabinet over here that I use for like, make sure nothing's gonna fall. Brooms and brushes and pole, long pole things I use in this cabinet, but I've got to do the same thing here. I'm gonna cut this trim. I'm gonna cut it flush here and remove the trim. It's on the end of it. That way this trim is still here and it's just gonna die off in the edge of this cabinet. So I wanted to get that sorted out, mark it, I'll pull it back out. I'll tear all this stuff down. We'll hang the cabinets. Same thing as the other side. I will have to cut out for the outlet so that we still have access to that. Still got a little work to do. So I've run into this here where I'm gonna have to cut out this panel around the outlet. So I just made a couple of simple marks here. I'm probably just going to use these little tin snips because they will, they should cut through this pretty easily.
Now before I install this next piece of trim, let me show you a little trick. I bought this trim pre-painted white and when I ripped them down through these one inch pieces that I need, I made sure that I had one finished edge for each side of this window trim because when I put it up against this, it's already going to be white in here and I don't have to go ahead and try to paint this or do anything. So now I'll be able to just like fill in these little nail holes, caulk this and sort of paint the face of it. I'm also going to go ahead and paint the rest of the window trim so it's not a natural wood and make sure it's all white. So now all I have to do is take this guy and place it in, nail it in, and it'll have this nice white face. Last thing I need to do so that you guys can actually see what I've done is replace the lighting in here. I've got two fluorescent light strips in here that are doing little to nothing for me. When this door is closed, it's really dark in here and that whole side of the garage is completely dark because there's no lights except for the little light bulb in the garage door opener which turns off after a few minutes. And this side gets blocked by this beam that's overhead. So it blocks out a lot, a, lot of, a lot of the light from getting that way and just casts a big shadow. So I'm gonna upgrade the lighting and then the final review. My gosh, that's a lot brighter. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna show on camera because you're looking into a light bulb, but this thing is incredibly bright. All right, let me do the other side and we'll be done with this. I am really happy and excited with the way the garage turned out. Massive transformation from this before to the after. Um, let's talk a little bit about the products that I use because I know you guys will have questions about that. This video is not sponsored by anybody but myself. And if you want to support me, you can do that at tacticalbabygear.com. So shameless plug there. But um, yeah, so nobody supplied me with anything. There's no sponsors. So these are all my own opinions and parts that I bought and that kind of thing. Full disclosure. Uh, the cabinetry and all that stuff. This is from New Age. This is their Pro Series. It's not cheap. It is expensive. It is very high quality. I've been very happy with it. This is the same stuff I used in my other house and um, everything soft close hinges and all kinds. It's, it's really nice stuff, but the cabinets and all that is the Pro Series from New Age. Uh, the lights are two different lights. I just got them at Home Depot. They were about $100 each. It's two different sets of lights. One has those really cool articulating ends, and I wanted those towards the front of the garage so that I could aim the light in different directions because they were so far forward. I wanted to be able to shoot some more light towards the back of the garage. And then the other set of lights that I put in front of the big garage door are just a standard flat panel. I will put links to all of that stuff in the garage. Now the bank of lights that's new that I wasn't replacing anything, I had to wire in. So I kind of did a hacky-ish, sort of a poor man's thing without having to get an electrician here and wire this stuff into a switch and all these kinds of things. So I use this really cool outdoor, it's like an outdoor landscape type of thing that you plug in, you plug the lights into that, and then it has a wireless remote so I can so I can use this remote and just turn these lights on and off, which is nice because then the normal light switch will operate the front bank of lights, which is nice for my wife or whoever might just be coming to flip something on and not do any work and they don't need all this light. So this is nice. Um, there's other ones out there, but they require apps for your phone and this and that. I didn't want, I just wanted a manual, as manual as you can get analog, just a button to be able to push in the garage and not have to use a phone and that sort of thing. So uh, there are a few things that I still want to do in here. I want to paint the rest of the wood at the bottom portion of the garage here, all this wood paneling and stuff. You guys saw me remove some of the trim previously. 
but I do want to paint the rest of this so that'll come at a later date. I did manage to squeeze a few things in here extra from the rendering uh, than I anticipated. I was able to get this tall skinny cabinet back here that I wasn't sure was going to quite fit, uh, but it was able to squeeze in right next to the electrical panel. So I felt good about that. I was also able to squeeze in this extra cabinet next to the air compressor and I used that extra bench top that I had uh, and screwed it to the top of that. And now I just have a little work surface, which is conveniently next to the gun safe. So if I wanted to clean guns or um, organize things or get mags out or whatever, if I was loading gun cases, that's a great place to do it right next to the gun safe. So that worked out really well. I also had this old TV that I managed to uh, bring in here and it fit really nicely on top of the safe. Didn't quite hit the ceiling, added a sound bar to it and an Apple TV. So now I've got entertainment out here as well. So I can just have YouTube videos and stuff like that playing while I'm doing whatever I'm doing in the garage. Uh, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Shoot.